Jock Poe sê Greg Ardai sy nieuwe boek oor die ANC War Party is so belangrik en so goed geskryf dat het om sprakeloos gelaat het. War Party bekyk die kultuur van politieke moorde in KwaZulu Natal. Die skryver sluit nou by my aan via Skype. Greg, welcome to the show. Ademo, thank you so much for having me. There's always been political violence in KZN. Why write a book about it now? Well, um, it started to escalate and uh, it started to change from inter-party violence between, uh, between uh, pol- political rivalries to intra-party violence between, uh, well, an- ANC on ANC, ANC comrades killing one another for access to, to um, patronage networks and, uh, um, and power. So, Greg, you mentioned that it's not about um, ideology. It's not having different views about uh, how the world should be um, should be regulated. Um, it's it's about something as basic as as money and and tenders. How is this linked to the uh, very powerful taxi industry in KZN? Well, what I found was um, well, I, I, I said to somebody the other day, um, if I had a buck for every time um, somebody said. Uh, um, in Kabi and uh, taxi industry, I'd be a millionaire. So in Kabi is a Zulu word for a hitman. And um, my research kept on taking me back to um, in Kabi serving the taxi industry. And um, there's a um, there's an there's a powerful intersect between the taxi industry and uh, uh, politics in KZN and the private security industry and um, yeah, that's that, that, that's where the connection is. But you even found, uh, Greg, that there are some hitmen or assassins, call it what you may, uh, who work in the private security industry in KZN. Yeah, I think that needs. I think it re- really needs scrutiny. The the little bit that I found uh, was that um, those guys, pretty much, those you know, it's a bunch of heavies that that pretty much run amok and do their own thing and they have a, a, a veneer of protection because they're in the private security industry so not to say that every private security company is rogue but there are uh, a hell of a lot of rogues in this very big industry. Greg, so two or three years ago the Moerane Commission uh, investigated political killings in KZN and found that since 94 there were about 450 uh, political killings in the province. Is this a problem which is now spreading um, outside of KZN? Well, I get a sense that it definitely is going, uh, well, I mean, Moroni himself in an interview with me, which is carried in the book, he speaks of of, uh, his concerns and I think I think the concerns are well-founded and um, we've seen uh, um, a couple of political hits outside of KZN, well, not a couple, quite, uh, quite a few, um, outside of KZN, and they they bear the hallmarks of what's happening in KZN. So, yes, I definitely think it has a, uh, the potential to spread. Greg, why do you accuse the, the governing party of of uh, turning a blind eye uh, and even of being a complicit in this. That's a, that's a very serious um, allegation to level against, uh, against the governing party. Yeah, well, I'd, I'd say that, that that allegation is made mostly by ANC comrades in KZN, actually. Um, it's like everybody, there's so much hand-wringing um, around the political violence, but we don't seem, it doesn't seem to stop. So if there were a will to stop it, then it would be stopped. Um, uh, and which is not to say that there aren't anti comrades who earnestly want to put an end to the violence. I just think that they haven't had a, a look at a macro look at this. They don't have a, enough of a helicopter view to see where the the, um, the 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 power lines are. And um, I mean, they're known amongst the ANC. But I, 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 don't, I don't think that they are serious, you know, to taking it seriously enough. If, if they were, they would, there wouldn't be the spate of killings we've just had in the last month. Greg, uh, but um, anybody uh, would, uh, would take this problem seriously if uh, murderers ended up behind bars. Uh, you found in your research that's not exactly what's happening, is it? No, I, yeah, I found um, that some murderers popped up again and um, that's very disturbing and um, often Voldemort's not so much the the, the case of um, 
necessarily one mur- murderer or one in Kabi, but it's uh, again intersecting links, you know, connections. And there's a, um, I wouldn't say conspiracy of silence, but there's death, you know, hitmen don't talk. Um, and they looked after uh, behind bars if they if they keep quiet. Um, so, uh, Greg, I mean, hitmen don't talk, but they might uh, make threats. And surely, you know, in your um, in the long time that you spent doing research for this book, uh, digging between the graves, as it were, um, you were the subject of threats yourself, weren't you? No, I, I, I got a taste. Well, I got a taste of what uh, whistleblowers. Um, um, uh, you know, the threat that they live under, but I, I didn't have a direct threat to my life. There were some hairy experiences, but no direct threat to my life. Uh, Greg, just uh, lastly, how can this be, how can this be stopped? You mentioned political will, but I mean, in concrete terms, what needs to be done by national government, provincial government in KZN to end this? I think they have to shine a spotlight of uh, transparency on public spending, because if you, if you, if you trace the whole thing back to its roots, Valdemar, it's all about it's all about uh, uh, swindles and, and, and you know, lies and cheating uh, relating to, to municipal tenders. And it's in forgotten towns a lot of the time that, where there's not terribly much scrutiny. And we just have to shine the light of, of transparency on, on public spending and, and, and uh, out the people who are corrupt. Greg, congratulations and thank you very much.